Hello everyone. I am Nazim. I am studying as a PhD student at Chanam National University. Today, I will make presentation about simultaneous nitrification, denitrification and carbon removal in microbial fuel cells in Professor Suki's class. Let's we start. At the beginning, I will try to explain some basics information and aim. Then, I will show their experiments and try to explain. Finally, I will try to explain your questions if any. In wastewater, nitrogen is found in the form of ammonium and nitrate. Nitrogen affect eutrophobic level of water and living creature health s, so it must be removed. One of the nitrogen removal methods is conventional biological nitrogen removal method. In this method, there are two steps. First step is nitrification which ammonia will transform to nitrite and then nitrate, respectively. In the second step which are called as denitrification, it transformed to nitrous oxide and finally nitrogen. In their previous study, wastewater flow to anode for carbon oxidation. Then it transferred to external vessel for nitrification. Finally, denitrification performed at cathode. So, nitrification and denitrification performed at different place. According to their results, they recover energy from acetate successfully, but the removal of nitrogen amount is not enough because of crossover of ammonia through the cation exchange membrane separating anode and cathode compartments. So, their aim is the integration of nitrification process into cathode to overcome ammonium losses problem. Let's we consider figure first. There are two compartments, which are called as anode and cathode, with granular shape. The synthetic medium was fed to the anode by peristaltic pump. The anode effluent, effluent means waste product, was flowed to cathode directly. Recirculation of compartments was done by P2 and P3 pumps. Finally, graphite rods to create electric contact between the granules and outside of the cell. Now let's we consider their experiments and results. First, they try to determine the effect of dissolved oxygen amount. They used to four different dissolved amounts, from high to low, for this purpose. The highest effluent acetate was observed at lowest dissolved oxygen levels. It means that some problem have occurred during nitrification step. At the highest level of dissolved oxygen, ammonium levels were very low, but nitrate amount was high and nitrogen removal is lowest. It means that some problem have occurred during denitrification step. To summarization, nitrification is limited by low dissolved oxygen levels, while denitrification on the contrary, limited by high level dissolved oxygen. Then they try to determine the effect of COD, chemical oxygen demand, amount. Let's we consider table. At lowest COD amount, highest current and power output obtained. Also, higher acetate consumption observed. At lowest COD, maximum nitrogen removal, but please consider remaining ammonium amount. It was so high, nearly 17 percentage. So low COD ratios led to unbalanced nitrification or denitrification rates. In contrast to low COD, higher COD ratios allow optimal removal of nitrogen and carbon. Generally, a domestic wastewater would need a COD ratio higher than 7 to remove nitrogen to low levels in a conventional nitrification or denitrification plant. In this experiment, they injected to 13.4 mg of ammonium nitrate to determine how many of its amount transformed to nitrogen and nitrous oxide. Ammonium was converted into 0.177 millimole nitrogen and 0.074 millimole nitrous oxide. In conclusion, first, the ammonium losses were resolved trough in situ nitrification. Second, energy consumption reduced. Third, microbial fuel cell system operate efficiently at low COD ratio. Then the low organic carbon requirement for efficient nitrogen removal. Finally, low biomass buildup. Let's we consider questions and try to answer them. 1. What are the nitrification and denitrification methods? 2. What are the effects of dissolved oxygen amounts on nitrification and denitrification? 3. 
what are advantages of biological nitrogen removal method over physical chemical methods. Finally, I am so grateful to my classmates for their attention that I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Professor Saki for his kind and polite behavior during class.